like most contemporary cities, Aarhus accommodates a number of public bath buildings. I'm now walking through the latest addition to the bathing facilities in Aarhus. It's the Harbour Bath, an open-air bath which is very popular in summer. As you will probably know, public bath buildings are not a modern invention. They were a key feature of cities in antiquity, especially in the Roman Imperial period. In most, if not in all cities of the Roman Empire, at least one public bath building existed. You can find the impressive remains of those bath buildings in Britain and in the Syrian desert, on the Danube and in northern Africa. In fact, bath buildings were a distinct marker of urbanity in antiquity. People today visit bath for leisure or to exercise. This was not different in antiquity, but public baths were important for other reasons too. As most citizens did not have bathing facilities at their homes, visits to the public bath were important to maintain personal hygiene. Moreover, the public bath buildings played a crucial role in the social life of both the male and female population. Public bath buildings of Roman times varied considerably in size and design, yet the vast majority of them had three main areas, the hot bath, the warm bath and the cold bath. A classic example for a Roman bath complex is the Forum Bath of Pompeii. The visitors first entered a changing room, the Apoditarium. From there, they usually went to the warm bath, the Tepidarium, with a small pool of warm water and warm air. After that, the bathers moved on to the hot room, the caldarium, which also contained one or more small water basins. Finally, they went to the cold bath with a larger swimming pool. The development of public bath buildings was closely connected to technical innovations. Most important was the invention of a heating system that could heat up large rooms and pools. This was achieved by the hypocaust, a central heating system under the floor and in the walls. The floors of the heated rooms were constructed on a grid of supporting pillars. Furnaces attached to the bath produced hot air that circulated in the open spaces below the floor and, in addition, through hollow tiles and pipes up the walls. This technique was perfected in the first century BCE. It quickly spread all over the empire and contributed significantly to the success of public bath. The largest and most impressive public bath existed in the city of Rome. The vast complex of the Bath of Caracalla, for example, which was built in the early 3rd century CE, measured 337 by 328 meters. This is the size of 15 soccer fields. It has been estimated that several thousand Romans could use it in one day. The massive ruins of this bath building convey a good impression of the size and of the splendor of the bath even today. The central building with the bathing facilities shows a symmetrical design that is typical for the imperial bath. Large changing rooms lead to various cold and hot rooms with pools. At the center is a large circular warm bath, a gigantic dome with a clear span of 35 meters roofs this room. The bath of Caracalla did not only have rooms for bathing and physical exercises, but also a huge library, meeting rooms, gardens, shops, and even a sanctuary for the god Mithras. In fact, only a small percentage of the total space was dedicated to actual bathing activities. This underlines that the Roman bath 
were more than just facilities for swimming and body care. They were multifunctional community centers where people met on a daily basis and pursued all kinds of business. In the cities of the Greek East, bath buildings had a long-standing tradition, but they became a common phenomenon only in the Roman period. By the 2nd century CE, most cities of the East had adopted bath buildings of the Roman type. Even in Palmyra in the Syrian desert, we find opulent bath houses. In my own excavations in Dolike, a city of ancient North Syria, we have discovered a large Roman bath building in 2017, which we are currently excavating. It is not as well preserved as the large bath in Pompeii and Rome, but you can identify the use of single rooms, like this one with a central swimming pool that is surrounded by a corridor with a mosaic floor. The overall layout of the bath complex is not clear yet, but the heated rooms must have been located in the southern part of the complex, where hypocausts are still partly preserved. The study of the bath will continue in the next years. You should keep in mind that in the Roman Empire, public bath buildings played an important role in daily urban life. In the second century, most cities of the Roman world offered bath with cold, warm and hot rooms. Crucial for the success of bath buildings was the invention of a refined underground heating system, the Hypercaust. Next to the amphitheater and the forum, public bath buildings counted among the most important public spaces in the ancient world.